What is the difference between being alone and being lonely? Just being alone, without any self-criticism or judgement, can be both natural and enjoyable. While loneliness is being alone, but not wanting to be alone. For many, loneliness is looked at with pity, seen as a state of lack and unfulfillment. In this video, I want to talk about the benefits of being alone, and what we can do to keep the balance between the world and our own self-efficiency. How necessary is social interaction for a happy and fulfilling life? Nowadays, while we rely on people to grow us food and give us clean water, provide us with heating and shelter, there isn't much of a survival advantage to having lots of friends. By and large, we can survive on our own. So why do we make friends and take part in social occasions? It comes down to a phrase the psychotherapist Adler coined, community feeling. This is a feeling of being of use to the world. Your skills and interests having a positive and meaningful impact on the world outside your four walls. This can be through volunteering, work that you enjoy and that benefits others, or simply taking part in group socials or one-on-ones. It is through collaboration and discussion that community feeling is satisfied. However, this doesn't mean that our whole lives should be dominated by this. It's important to have time for reflection and self-observation, turning your life away from the external and going deeper into the internal, therefore leading to more valuable relationships. As through being content in oneself, it's essential in having more meaningful relationships with other people. It could be said that the impulse to make friends and have romantic relationships comes from a lack within ourselves. We aren't whole and fulfilled in our own skin, so we search for the missing part of ourselves in other people. But this can lead to dysfunctional relationships. If our interaction with another person is predicated on what they can give us, we are not honouring them as individuals we can learn from and grow from but individuals who can distract ourselves from the mental baggage we carry. We are trying to bring a person whose actions are out of our control into our control. This creates a relationship of clinging that can only result in disaster. The Stoics say we should separate the things in this world we can control and the things we can't, examples being people, the weather and the traffic. If we try to cross the streams and bring a person out of our control into our control, we will only feel disappointed and miserable. Accepting a person fully means understanding that their job on this planet is not to make up for what you lack, not to pick you up every time you fall, not to respond to every text message you send them, or ask about your life like you ask about theirs. If someone doesn't fit into how you want them to be, that says more about you than the other person. You want the world to give you an easy route, where everything is there to please you, but that's not what the world is. That's where being alone comes in. If we take time to ourselves in meditation, we can come to understand how we feel most of the time where our anxieties and fears lie, and what they really are, sensations in our body. Our feeling of having problems that other people can solve, fear of death that can be distracted with company, and social anxiety because we listen to our mental judgments, are all symptoms of a lack of meditation. If we tune in to our bodies deeply and thoughtfully, we can see that all of these are simply energy sensations in the body. Without a closer eye on the workings of our mind, and its finely tuned system of creating distracting thoughts that pull at us like a magnet and bring anxiety into the body, we'll never escape our feelings of self-deficiency that plague our external life. If you can't bring your attention from your thoughts to your breath and body alone, how can you do it when in the midst of social situations? When you are alone, it's just you, consciousness, and your mind, an object of consciousness. Being able to stay centred and still while your mind criticises, ridicules and protests like a misbehaving child is probably the most valuable skill one can have. If you're able to do this, you're more likely to have stronger relationships with other people. Instead of seeing someone as a mental concept, someone we compare ourselves to, criticise, judge, cower away from, or see as godlike, we see them raw and unfiltered by the mind. Our senses, sight, hearing and touch are enough to fully engage with a person unclouded from mental noise that treats that person more like a thought than a human being. Can we drop our mental noise and fully be present with a person, listen intently to them, instead of see that person as a means to an end? Only through being alone can we learn these skills. Instead, we will be caught up in not only our own ego, but the egos of others. Mental noise isn't just in our own head, it's in everyone's, and if we aren't aware of it, we can react to things unconsciously, and react to feelings in the body negatively, 
when all they are are just feelings. In their raw form, whether it is anxiety, fear or dread, it is just a feeling and it's our mind that labels it and makes a problem out of it. If we leave our minds alone while simultaneously watching it closely, we can be present and calm in the face of people and events that are out of our control. So we have seen why aloneness is important to create and sustain healthy friendships. But what if it goes too far? What if we enjoy being alone so much that we don't take part in social occasions? This is where the metaphor of a pendulum comes in handy. Michael Singer talks about a pendulum in relation to the Tao, which is the natural order of things. Presence, peace, a tranquil mind. On one side of the pendulum is doing, and the other side is being. The Tao is in the middle. Being refers to meditation, a state of non-doing while doing is interacting with the world of forms. Most of us are on the side of doing, which if done unconsciously is our way of escaping boredom. Boredom being yet another feeling that we label. However, if we meditate all the time, we miss out on the joy of doing, fulfilling work, activities and relationships. Community feeling. Therefore, we must stay in the middle of the pendulum, and that is where the Tao lies. Our life's mission should be to keep this balance and harmony between being and doing. Keeping this balance should be our most important task. You should ask yourself a few questions. Are you escaping from yourself through friendships and external achievements? Have you looked deeply into who you really are? Not a name, but consciousness itself? Then step back and take some time in solitude, meditating, reading and doing something creative that requires being alone. Or, are you too happy being alone? Have you created a comfort zone of security that doesn't allow anything you can't control to enter? Then maybe take some steps into the world, follow your will, not your mind, and stretch and pull at your comfort zone. Take part in social situations, organize them yourself, and share the joy and security you feel inside with the world outside. Whether you are introverted or extroverted, alone time is valuable and necessary for a healthy mind. So sit down and focus on your breath, because not enough of us appreciate our natural, peaceful breath that keeps us alive. Feel your heartbeat, Notice that watching it brings it down to a comfortable rhythm. Focus on your chest, the knots that unconsciously build up in there, and see them as nothing more than a sensation in your body. Bring presence into your life, and you will gain clarity and insight that will form the basis of healthy and sustainable relationships. Why don't you close your eyes and breathe? It might just save your life.